Have you ever wondered how long survivors are willing to wait at an exit gate just to teabag the killer before leaving the trial? Well, wait no longer as I now have the answer to this question. So let's really quick go back in time and figure out just how we got here. It all started on Azarov's Resting Place, a horrifically designed map in the shape of an eye, causing three generators to spawn on one side and three generators to spawn on the other. Attempting to defend gens on both sides of the map is usually a good way to lose pathetically, and as a result, this heavily encourages holding down only one side of the map. And this is exactly what ended up happening in my very long, very boring Vecna match. Still under two minutes into the match and two generators had already popped as I just got my first down. Uh. One gen down. We want to hook her on our side of the map. At this point, it would be throwing to not just try to secure a 3 gen strategy, right? It's just unfortunately how this map is designed. And as the match progressed, I could tell the survivors were getting pretty salty at my playstyle, even though, again, I really didn't have much of a choice other than to just not try to win at all. However, I felt like trying to win this match, which I suppose did make me an asshole. So this goes on and on, and eventually I'm able to secure a kill. Now I'm sure this annoyed them even more as the teabag started to intensify, and eventually, due to some mistakes on my part, they were able to force the last gen while I committed to getting a 2k. Now, as it would turn out, both exit gates spawned on the far end of the other side of the map, so there was no point to try to defend them as they were obviously 99. So I just waited, assuming that the survivors would leave within a minute or two, so I just started talking to chat and didn't pay it much mind. But after too many minutes blew by, I realized they weren't actually going to leave until they got to teabag me first. And since again this map is absolute dog water, they knew that if they came all the way to my side of the map just to teabag me one last time, that there was a potential chance they wouldn't be able to make it back to the 99 to exit gate, right? So this was sort of a perfect storm of douchebaggery and ego. And as there was no way in hell I was going to give these shitters what they wanted, I decided to boot up the Texas Chainsaw Massacre while they waited for their We Held M1 on a map designed by an escaped zoo animal reward, which in this case would be the satisfaction of teabagging me one last time before leaving. Finally, at the 35 minute mark, they decided to leave. And I genuinely believe that if it wouldn't be for the fact that I would get the win after the server closed at the one hour mark, that they would have been willing to stay the full hour. Because they were such competitive, stubborn bastards that it would have been worth it for them just to teabag after a draw. Now the funny thing is, by doubling down on this idea that I would come watch them leave and let them teabag me at the exit gate, they sort of created a new wager, a new match if you will. The battle of who had the bigger ego. And in this new contest, I ended up being the winner. So they somehow took a draw, committed to a sunken cost ego battle, and ended up wasting 20 minutes of their life, not to even be a sore winner, but more pathetically, a sore drawer. And in this new battle, they lost, and I won. The big irony here is that they were so incredibly upset over a boring 15 minute match that they were willing to dedicate an extra 20 minutes of their life just to BM. The level of brain rot involved here was remarkable to say the least. Now, you might be asking at this point, Choi, I'm not so convinced. Are you sure you actually won here? You're goddamn right. Just listen to the live reaction from chat when they finally left with their tails between their legs. Now the last question here is, should these survivors be banned permanently for holding the game hostage? Of course, you could make the argument that I could simply progress the game by walking all the way over to the other side of the map to open the exit gate myself, but why should I have to do that? Behavior clearly states that if the survivors are not doing anything to progress the objective, that it's a bannable offense. So I'm completely within my rights to demand justice and a permanent ban here. Just kidding. 
This is obviously a very stupid reason to ban somebody because either of us could have ended the game at any time. This is no different from a Tombstone Meyer standoff or a Hatch standoff, only that it's even somehow dumber. That's why it's ridiculous that Behavior has now officially issued a permanent ban on a content creator for body blocking a survivor in a corner to kill them with the endgame collapse. The game still had progression to it, nobody was actually held hostage, it's nearly as dumb as my ego battle here. There's no universe where I'd want these players banned. We put our wieners on the table for no reason and had a pissing contest in which I won no harm no foul. Something pretty similar happened with this now banned content creator. Everyone involved played a stupid game and got a stupid reward, but in the end nobody was wronged in any way and I don't know why behavior feels like it's their business to step in and ban the killer as if they did something irredeemable and the survivors were perfectly innocent in the situation after basically holding the game hostage in their own way. Now if you want to know more about this specific event, I will have a link to it at the end of this video. But just to spread the new message, you can be banned for extended body blocking as killer. So you know, wraith mains and body blocker hags, be careful out there. Now I'm being sarcastic with that, but still, be careful. On top of that, apparently you can be banned for not doing generators for an extended period of time because that's not at all an ambiguous guideline to follow, especially for new players or people who don't follow Twitter 24 seven. Not gonna lie, personally, it feels like behavior didn't like this content creator, or they're just doubling down on a dumb decision because they don't wanna look even more incompetent than they did when they were banning innocent people earlier in the year just because hackers were impersonating their names on Twitch. Do you remember when behavior came out and said they have new quality assurance measures to make sure BS bans wouldn't happen anymore. Well, I don't know about anyone else, but body blocking to get a kill with the end game collapse feels like a pretty dumb reason to ban somebody, especially permanently. And saying that it's because this player was banned years ago is not cutting it. Nobody should be banned for inconveniencing the other side with shitty gameplay mechanics. Just fix the shitty gameplay mechanics so they don't happen anymore. It's not that hard. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts on this. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks for watching and have a good one.